Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good night to everyone around the world. Welcome to the discussion about blockchain and the future of decentralization. Uh, today we have got Gumbit from XDNA, Brandon Grill from OXBTC Foundation, and our very own Jesse Berger. I, I don't think I've actually ever said your last name. Is it Berger? Sadly, in English it is. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not even going to attempt <laughs> saying yes -y or yes-sir or whatever. Um, yeah, don't try. <laughs> uh, and yeah, CEO of Index Monkey. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go down the list here. Uh, if you guys want to start off, just kind of introduce yourself um, as well as just kind of a brief little bio and description about the project that you guys are working on right now. Uh, so we'll start off with Gunbit. Okay, uh, so my name is Arthur, uh, Arthur Prince, uh, and I am uh, SMEO and founder of uh, XDNA project, it's the XDNA coin. Uh, we are a new modern cryptocurrency, just just one in a wild coin <laughs> with some features. I, I will not talk about this because it will not, it will not be a short conversation. Um, okay. <laughs> XDNA.io, okay. All right, Brendan. Hey, yo, I'm Brandon Grill. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and vice president of the Zerox Bitcoin Foundation. Uh, Zerox Bitcoin, if you're not aware, it's the first uh, mineable token on ERC. Excuse me, first mineable token on Ethereum. Uh, it uses an SHA-3 uh, hashing algorithm and has some similar specs to Bitcoin, hence the name 21 million max coin. Um, and unlike previous mineable iterations that are Kind of subject to civil attacks like Minerium and Bitcoinerium. Uh, it's the first one that actually uses GPU and FPCA um, full hashing to give you the distribution. Nice. Box. Yeah. So Jesse. I'm one of the founders. <laughs> I'm one of the founders of Index Monkey, which is basically um, the backbone of investing for blockchain. All right. So, um, yeah, today we're just going to be discussing uh, the overall trends and stuff in the in blockchain, blockchain futures, um, and kind of what what holds in store for the next year, two years, and uh, going forward. So, uh, first topic is just kind of major block trends, uh, blockchain trends this year. So, what do you guys think um, is going to be a major trend this year? Last year it was very much, uh, or not last year, two years ago. Um, a little bit last year, but uh, it was a lot of tokenization, and we saw a lot of projects coming out of dApps. Um, prior to that, uh, there was a lot more of the privacy token or privacy coins um, kind of emerging. So, uh, where do you guys think that blockchain will head this year? Yeah, so I feel comfortable in economics since that's my background. So, the first of all that I find very interesting is lending in uh, the cryptocurrency space, which is gaining foot in the lending space more and more. I think there are the, a couple of projects are over a billion in lending now. Uh, uh, the next one would probably be still exchanges. Binance is still the leading exchange for most part, uh, except for BitMEX, but I'm not gonna count BitMEX to be honest. I think um, like lending and uh, exchange tokens are kind of the- Yeah. Yeah, no, not as an investment. I would say that lending in general would just increase as a use case, since I think that is a genuine case for blockchain. blockchain uh, considering that credit scoring is a very centralized model that puts a lot of people out of the way of getting the credit they need. Uh, for exchanges, I still think that at this early stage is still one of the first use cases it is for. Anybody can invest in it or trade it or buy it, which is a good point, but for now, it's still just a betting machine. Uh, right. And if you're in and for the betting machine and an exchange, it's probably the best way to do it. So those two are my first two. Okay. Insurance would maybe be in the future, but not right now. All right. Uh, Brandon or... I was going to ask if uh, you had any specific platforms or projects in the lending space that you're thinking of. I'm familiar with... Compound, of course, has been popular for about a year now. I heard about them probably about a year ago. Um, and from what I understand, they're lending uh, yeah, crypto a lot of them, to crypto. Yeah, a lot of them died. Yeah, Salt is one of the projects. It was one of the first one that took off that really got a hit. 
Uh, but in the end, it kind of went down because they weren't able to handle the amount of lending uh, 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 requests. So they basically went down when they couldn't handle all the requests that were coming in. Uh, ETH Land took over at that point, and I think that is Nexus or Nexo. That is the new big one now. And there's another one from whom I forgot the name, but they got into a billion now. Um, those are pretty good. ETH Land has been doing pretty good. I've used it myself. It's pretty all right. It's all right. Then you have the, those are more for direct lending with collateral and interest rates. And then you have Bloom, which is more about credit scoring. Uh, but I don't know, credit scoring is still a long way away while loan lending and loaning is still working right now. You could do it right now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So when I think about lending, the first thing that my mind goes to is also uh, financial options and derivatives. I know projects like a DYDX and Dharma are definitely in this space now where they're trying to uh, push the limits of what you can do on Ethereum completely on chain. Um, what do you think about uh, projects like DYDX or Dharma and how is that going to go? Uh, go I haven't, looked, I haven't but, looked into it too much, but for lending, for investing in anything about futures or direct investments for the short term, I probably think it's not a good thing. I think that investing, uh, I think that lending should be, uh, what would be the correct word? Only to further your foundations. So basically you could take out a loan, not for a direct investment in cryptocurrencies, which is very volatile, obviously, uh, but maybe for like in stocks index, it should be towards those that cannot get credit lending for something very basic that they might need, such as building your, uh, maybe opening a shop in your place if you don't have access to credit because of a bad credit score, which could get very much okay. in the way, uh, especially if you might be, if you have a small business opening up a loan of a couple of thousands with a small interest rate, small-ish interest rate, um, it's pretty good knowing that they can't take any more than your collateral. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so from my uh, from my point of view, we're losing you a little bit. Uh, could answer the main question: Why should I keep this this exactly cryptocurrency and uh, in my pocket? You know, uh, Ethereum. I have an idea. I can keep it to create a ICO, to invest to ICO. Okay, uh, where is... I think we lost you. Yeah, I think it lost you again. Hey, you might want to... Transparent. <laughs> Gunbit, can yeah. you disconnect and reconnect? The, uh... Yeah, I will. Okay. 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 Um... All right, so we'll just kind of we'll just move on to the next one as well um so kind of lending platforms that kind of thing brandon do you think that there's a different platform that might be emerging or or a different um uh a different trend that might be emerging or are you pretty much consistent with uh finance fucks there yeah i mean i think and this is maybe going a little bit away from the question um but definitely the projects that are going to survive I think mm -hmm. the next year are the ones that are going to have um, backing from more legitimate VC funds. Um, I know last year and especially two years ago was kind of the age of the ICO. Anyone can raise money for any project. Uh, but nowadays there are more and more experts in the field and a lot of them, they really have institutional uh, capital that they could put towards real projects that go through incubators that demonstrate real business sense things of that sort. So that's just going to be a general trend going forward. The ones who will survive are the ones who already are going to be having blog posts written about them on their incubator websites. They're going to be presenting at conferences. Um, they're going to be doing things legit. Uh, and that's going to, that's just going to differentiate the, the weaker projects from the strong ones going forward. Definitely. Uh, I'm so, I'm sorry, guys. Can you hear me? Right yeah, now? we can hear you fine. Okay. okay. So my point of view was that, uh, uh, not uh, 90 percent but uh, about 99 or maybe 98 uh, coins are almost useless because uh, you don't have you, you don't have a transparent use case to hold these coins to mm. buy more of these coins you know and uh, 
uh, one day will come and uh, supply will uh, overcome the demand and the price will fall and coin become become almost dead. So do you... and, uh, this situation which uh, happens with uh, almost every coin on the market which which is not uh, you know uh, brand new in terms of technologies or some use cases uh, um, with almost everyone so uh do you think that I mean, speaking of like 90 percent, 95 and you know other people estimating like 99 percent yeah. of blockchain projects dying off um and kind of in combination with uh what are the chat questions here about like ICO crackdowns and um, and having a lot of people having to be a little more accountable for ICOs. Uh, do you think that the large die off of projects is going to be good overall for blockchain, or do you think that that's actually going to scare more people away? Uh, I mean, it can really go both ways. So, what are you guys' opinions on that? Um, having a, a massive die off of you know, these, these old projects or obsolete projects and scam projects out there. I think it's already happening. I think we're seeing a lot of it. I think some of the hardest hit projects, um, just to pull an example out, uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of maybe the Pareto network project, mm -hmm. Pareto network token. Yeah. Um, that's a token, uh, that has been especially hard hit, um, maybe down 98% from its peak value or something um and it's those smaller projects that have questionable origins questionable backings um and really unfinished uh platforms uh that are really suffering especially when like pareto they release the platform and it turns out no one uses the platform right so <laughs> right like so that, that that's an issue <laughs> that's an issue this for every is exactly project. This Go is ahead. exactly which happens with XDNA right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have XDNA Foundation charity platform. It's a worldwide peer to peer uh, for not like crypto loans, but for free donations. And uh, well, e even if we don't uh, advertise it uh, uh, much as we could, uh, almost no one uses it. And, and we have some problems with it right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that uh, personally, I think that the the kill off, uh, we'll just call it the kill off year, um, is going to be great for crypto overall. Like, yeah, we've got uh, like a lot of different uh, like new investors coming into the space, and they are a little bit skeptical because of how many projects are dying. But I think that it the regulations and things that are putting in being put in place this year, along with how many projects are dying, uh gives the impression that you can't just start an ICO and make billions off of it like you could in the past. Um, similar to the dot-com boom, where people would put anything, you know, internet or, you know, dot-com in their name and instantly make money. Uh, people are going to actually have to come up with real solutions to real problems and not just have buzzword hype. So you're going to be able to find... Um, diamonds a little bit easier than prior where it was like you had a mountain of uh, pardon my french but you had a mountain of shit and you're trying to find just like one gem in it um but you've got yeah 500 different lending coins and only one of them is actually legitimate so i think long term it's gonna be good for uh for blockchain as a whole but yeah we definitely i think are past that that initial hype stage uh what do you guys think about that well, from my point of view, the most problem is that, uh, you know, uh, I have a special bot which uh, 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 duplicates all announcements from Bitcoin Talk about new projects uh, to myself. And uh, it's about still right now, uh, five projects every day, new five projects every day. It's like more than 2000 uh, projects uh, re released in 2018 and uh, the supply of uh, new possibilities you know new projects uh, new opportunities for investors is too much and if your uh, new project uh, fall apart or slow down uh, in development stage or in in terms of uh, price uh, and uh, revenues for investor uh, ways they simply will just switch to new project and you know uh, 
in uh, third quarter uh, where was uh, very much master node projects which were uh, which were obviously scam uh, it was like you know semi scam and all know what it will be scam but still participate and invest because it was profitable and uh, this is a bad way uh, as long as uh, create new projects uh, and make it profitable even if it's uh, coin for coin and just uh, trash coin you know uh, is viable uh, it's bad and uh, i think that only uh, some kind of regulation to crypto market will change this uh, situation i think a lot of the so a lot of coins are dying and new ICO projects are going to have a lot of trouble. Um, unlike in previous highs and lows of the cryptocurrency space, um, this one, this past, you know, two, three years, whatever, obviously we can all probably agree have been especially unique in scale. Um, and what I'm concerned about is that everyone who has been in the space or would be interested in the space already got in at this point. Right. And if they're, if they're burned out, right, if they're burned by all these projects, uh, they might still have lasting negative feelings and say, you know what, I lost so and so amount of money. Uh, I'm done. I, I, I don't want to deal with it anymore. And that's going to take a long time to recover, especially since a lot of ICO projects uh, got their funding from crowdfunding, right? Especially the early ones, the right. early Ethereum tokens. Uh, I'm thinking like Aragon, when we say go, I guess. Um, you know, those happen to still be around, but many of them don't. And that's going to be a huge problem, just convincing people that your project is worth investing in. And that's why I'm saying that now that we have somewhat of an infrastructure, the beginnings of an infrastructure of incubators, of incubators, um, of systems in which you can connect uh, bigger investors to legitimate projects, and make the right. project teams go through a lot more rigor to demonstrate they're serious about it in the way that you would for traditional businesses. Now that this is happening, those are the projects that are we going to have going to have to fight for this institutional money. And it's not going to come as easy anymore from the average person like you and me. Right. I, I fully agree with that. Um, now, uh, just kind of shifting over um, into the ad space and advertising. Um, because uh, that has been kind of an important thing lately, uh, like Brave Browser and that kind of stuff um, coming out. Um, but uh, with that being said, uh, in 2016, here's a little bit of data for you guys. Uh, about 37% of ad impressions were from bots, uh, resulting in about $7 billion of ad fraud. Uh, so this is a, a growing problem financially, but... It's also gathering irrelevant statistical information for demographics. So you're getting, uh, getting bad data, essentially 37, 40% of your data that you're getting when you're putting out an ad is wrong and it's incorrect. Um, so with that being said, uh, which blockchain project do you guys think is positioned best to fit the solution um, for different companies? I still think I still think a basic attention token bat and brave I still think they have the leg up in this situation um for those who are watching who might not be familiar it's you would have a brave browser your advertisement would be built into the browser itself and not website specific you'd be paid bat tokens to allow ads an ad blocker would be built into it, and then you would pay for access. Like a Wall Street Journal, instead of paying a subscription, you'd seamlessly pay them bat. That's the end goal. Um, it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg situation to get that set up throughout the internet. Um, because in order for it to work, right. you need to have a large subsection of the user base actually using the Brave browser or competitor browser that might be allowed at some point. Um, so I, I think the chicken egg thing is going to be a problem and bat is probably the best suited at this point uh just based on the name recognition the amount of talent that they have and the amount of funding ongoing that they have and even them i'm skeptical that they'll be able to actually uh pull off this mass movement of right uh, chain based advertising stream yeah no i think they published something not too long ago like they have about 10 sites in the top 500 websites that are actually registered with them uh can you think of any solutions to their, their problem? Uh, just kind of offhand, if you've been th thinking about it. 
Right. I mean, there is the this is like the solution that you do for a big startup company like Uber, which is to run at a loss for a long time. Right. That would be something like you have to incentivize people to move over knowing that this is an inefficient system for now that will only become efficient once there's a large scale adoption. I don't know how feasible that is. I don't know if there's the will to do that. And I don't know if there's the funding to do that. I'm not entirely sure that what that would look like, especially since many of the top 500 websites are websites that are not necessarily crypto friendly, either on principle or just logistically their users aren't crypto friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so what you'd have to have is a situation where you could have a side by side, you have the option of either going the bat route or you could pay the standard subscription fee or be limited or watch the advertisements. Um, and that's just really a tricky situation to balance. If you could snap your fingers and just say, look at that, everyone uses Brave, everyone uses Bat. I have right. no doubt in my mind be an efficient system. I have no doubt in my mind people will get more relevant ads. And I have no doubt in my mind that it would cut down on a lot of the bots. But right now, we're just not seeing that. Um, sure. And that's, that's a bit of a challenge to actually get there. That turning point is incredibly difficult. And I don't see that happening in this coming year at all. Do you think to get? Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, right now it's uh, it's not kind of uh, a rule of market, but you know, uh, without uh, without extra bots and at uh, you can't be relevant uh, with our project because uh, if you if you're not Ethereum, you Ethereum, you know. Uh, the amount of, of uh, our crypto projects will uh, uh, will make you disappear. You, you, you will not be shown on uh, on the media of your potential investors. So uh, you know it's a it's a rule of market. Uh, the, you must be shown uh, so people could uh, could know about you and invest into your project. Uh, it, and it's not about one uh, one media platform which could be built and uh, it uh, will uh, and it will uh, solve this problem. Uh, you know, uh, main medias like Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Reddit, uh, and uh, messengers like Telegram or Desert, all uh, almost all crypto projects use uh, extra bots and uh, you know, kind of uh, gray market. Uh, great mm -hmm. marketing, I would say, with uh, um, with some reviews and other stuff, uh, because uh, because without it, uh, it will be uh, be because you know because all use this this kind of stuff, and uh, you, you will looks like home. Oh, this project is has uh, not not much followers in one two weeks, uh, not much uh, commentaries, not much people in messengers. I think it's a bad project. I will not invest it while this is actually a good project, but you don't make your real own research. You just judge by, by a media because you don't want to uh, invest your time to uh, look closer to this project because there is too many projects which you have to explore. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the, the browser system and like custom ads on browsing and having that kind of a system set up will be great for companies in the long run. But yeah, like, like Brandon was saying, um, it just, it's going to be a lot of loss for them first. And I don't know if they're going to be able to, uh, to be able to sustain that kind of model without a steady flow of investors. And with the current state, uh, like we were mentioning before, we've got, um kind of a a flat landscape here where projects really aren't taken off they're not getting the boom there's not as much hype behind things in blockchain because we're in the trench now the trench is where all the great projects are are built and founded um but but yeah during that time it's very very rough to gain any traction and if you're you're planning to take a, a massive loss while you're already in the trench uh that could be devastating for a startup um but with that being said uh it could also influence people that are already in the space 
I think if they implement a KYC AML solution that's a lot less tedious, like built into the browser, built in uh, in some way, uh, you have something where you can go and buy tokens or uh, do anything that would normally require a KYC, but all your information already stored in the browser data. Um, however, that does also pose some security risks. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll it'll be very interesting to see what the next year holds for uh, for browser apps um, as well. Uh, so, going on, uh, what do you guys think are the primary threats to blockchain adoption this year? I think the threats are probably self self inflicted. It's it's not necessarily. I'm not concerned too much about the regulatory aspect because right. those seem to be harder hitting on the projects that were already showing themselves to be not trustworthy or reliable. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I have a U.S. perspective here. I think the U.S. government is taking it slow and has somewhat uh, been okay with letting a lot of these projects go. Obviously, you have, have some exchanges that get fined now and some action has been taken by the SEC. Right. Um, that's not something I like to see too much um, because it it does bring in the threat of an overregulation. Um, but I think a lot of the threats to blockchain are just going to be its inability to get off the ground in terms of mass adoption, in terms of uh, corporate usage, institutional usage. Um, and it, it, you know, it might not be another big run up like we're used to. It might just be steady find a good implementation here that's a little jump we find another good implementation here that's a little jump and then corporations take it piece by piece where they need it um private blockchain solutions are going to be a threat um the more you read about you know public blockchains the more you realize most things don't need a public blockchain um right there are specific things that need a public blockchain cryptocurrencies definitely need a public blockchain many utility tokens uh benefit from a public blockchain. Um, but if we're talking internal accounting, a lot of times it's just not necessary. So you're not yeah. going to see a lot of corporations take on a public blockchain um, when they can do everything in house. That's why VeChain is destined to fail. Um, there's no reason for these right. corporations to do something like VeChain because you don't need a public blockchain to give your customers the assurance of where their packages and products are coming from, right? You can have non-blockchain regulatory services you can have right um other regulatory agencies uh, you know a lot in the us a lot of food regulation is done by private regulators who are trusted and audited by third parties and they themselves audit the things you know you don't need all these things right so i think people need to be comfortable with the idea that blockchain is not going to permeate every aspect of our life and technology in quite the same way not for a very long time. And corporations that were promised to, you know, adopt it, uh, they're not going to do it unless they absolutely have to, unless they absolutely see a profit motive to do so. And right now, they're just there just isn't a profit motive in many cases. Yeah, I think I think you're pretty much like right on there. Um, I do think that we're going to see a lot more centralized projects happening, but with good right. reason. Um, before anything that was centralized was deemed as bad, it was a terrible idea, uh, just because centralization is the opposite of what everyone saw as blockchain but i think that companies uh really value really would have uh utility for actually using a centralized blockchain because there's you know personal information that kind of thing that's in there um there is something about a government regulation or government I don't know, venture if you would call it um, but where they wanted to store all gun purchases and that kind of thing on a public blockchain, um, which I thought would be a terrible idea because that would have to store private information and who owns guns at what houses all across uh, the country. And that is not something that should be public. That is something that should definitely be centralized um, and very, very private if they if they were to implement something like that, because now you're giving people, you know, hey, these houses have homes, these ones don't, or these these houses have guns, these ones don't, and that could definitely wreak a lot of havoc. Um, so yeah, centralization, I think, is a, is a really good idea, um, especially even if you're starting off 
a new blockchain project, like whether it's, you know, XDNA or OXBTC, um, at the beginning, you know, there's going to be a lot more centralization, but I think that that actually helps grow the project because you have to have centralization before you can have decentralization. Um, a good it, example of that, opinion. sorry to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Um, a good example, just on that last point you made about starting off centralized, I think Zcash is a project that's been very professionally handling that model. Um, Zcash built into their code. Um, Zcash is not a fork of Bitcoin, but it is a little bit based off of it with the addition of ZK snarks, and they're kind of diverging in various places. Um, but built into their code uh, is uh, a reward that goes to the Zcash Foundation or the Zcash company, I forget which, that is set, set to stop after the first halvening um, at uh, 10 Point five million right. coins, um, and what that's allowed them to do is have a, you know, a worldwide network of uh, crypto mathematicians, uh, best software engineers working on this stuff. They do a lot of workshops. I know one of my colleagues from Xerox Bitcoin actually attended a workshop that they put on on zk Snarks, awesome. and they're really awesome. developing uh, their project very well because they started off with this initial boon of funding, while also having a clear road plan for how they plan to increase the decentralization as time goes on. And all of that's going to be auditable and provable uh, as things go forward, right? And it is a proof of work, so it's going to be uh, all forks after a certain point, I believe, are going to be determined by the majority. Um, that's a model people were afraid of. That's a model that Bitcoin does not follow. Um, and that's a model that my own project that I'm working with, Xerox Bitcoin, also doesn't follow for philosophical reasons. Um, but I don't think that projects should automatically be dismissed just because of that. And I think there's a lot you can actually do once you give yourself the initial funding. It's just a matter of what you're trying to do with the project um, and how much work it's going to take to get there. Right. Right. Definitely. Um, so we're going to we're pretty much at the 30 minute mark so we'll kind of wrap up here uh what do you guys think is going to be the biggest um disruptor of industries in blockchain so like what what industry is going to be impacted the most in the next five years because of blockchain is it you know the big data is it uh healthcare automotive what do you guys see as being the the big disruptor and why Um, I would probably go the, within five years, which is pretty fast. I'd say, depending on how fast Internet of Things moves, probably that. Otherwise, it would go for healthcare on a smaller scale, not on like a huge scale, but on a smaller scale, probably healthcare. Okay. I know healthcare okay. does have a lot of issues with um, uh, keeping records straight. <laughs> and, yeah, they do uh, experiments with it. Yeah, insurance yeah, expect- has been a pain in the ass. Yeah, they actually, I, I uh, do some research for an insurance blockchain in the Netherlands and it's, it, they are already working on it. And it's pretty cool. They're all trying new things out with blockchain and healthcare, which is pretty cool. But I think that they awesome. are getting, they are exploring it the most, at least in my experience, they do explore it quite a bit in the industry. So here's the thing that I'm concerned about healthcare uh, from a U.S. perspective. Um, Things move very, very slowly in healthcare in the U.S. because of its regulated nature and perhaps even more slowly in some countries in Europe and Asia because of their um, governmental systems. What I'm worried about when you talk about a blockchain in healthcare is that there's not going to be the political will to actually incorporate it into the entire system as a whole. And so if it's going to happen, it's going to be based on the private providers and hospital side. Uh, right. if anything, with the records. Um, and that's going to be a slow process. And we're not really going to see the results of that in the next year. Um, but five years, perhaps we are going to see something that makes it easier and safer um, to have a medical record, to transfer it between physicians and practices. Um, and I- I'm pretty hopeful for that, but that's going to be a very slow process. Uh, I work in healthcare myself, so I know that that's going to be... <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, it took them, what... 25, 30 years just to get uh, electronic records uh, actually to become a thing. So, um, right. I mean, 
volunteer ambulance agency I work on, we're still doing paper records. We fill everything up out of town. We're just switching over now. It's going to take another year or two. Yeah. About about paper records, uh, I think that uh, remain the data could be also uh, a legal market, you know. Uh, it will be... Uh, it will be using uh, blockchain uh, for documents for some kind of stuff, uh, but uh, okay. it's uh, uh, but it's unreachable without uh, without, mean, uh, without the government will. Right now, the uh, like state bars and stuff are pretty much just running through a centralized entity. Um, so I definitely think that having you know, yeah doctor licenses and um, uh, lawyer licenses, I can't remember, whatever they're called. Um, and even like your series six, series seven, anything to do with finance, uh, something where you can actually see, Hey, here's the, you know, the person's name, their ID number, here's the records, here's any disputes against them, that kind of thing on a public blockchain. Cause it's information that's already out there with these centralized entities. Uh, so putting it on a blockchain, that's not changeable. I think is would benefit the public that are actually using those people and their services. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a possibility. Uh, Brandon, what did you? What was your opinion as far as uh, the big disruptor? <laughs> Out of all the industries in the world, <laughs> um, it is it is a big question. Um, and no matter what answer I give, there's like a 90% chance I'm going to be wrong. Um, right, right. It's purely you can never speculation. Me. Welcome to blockchain. Purely speculation. <laughs> this, is, this might be an unpopular answer, but realistically, things like Ripple um, and uh, Stellar might gain some traction um, within financial services, things that are not directly going to impact the consumer, things that are going to be, going to be working behind the scenes uh, for things like bank payments and remittances. Okay. Um, that that I don't know too much about. To be honest, I'm kind of speculating my answer just based on the resiliency of these tokens. Um, I don't know much about Ripple. Uh, I know a little bit more about Stellar and even that's not much. Um, but uh, the fact is that a lot of the money that's still in blockchain is still in these projects. And a lot of the amateur people have gotten out by now. So, you know, yeah. if, if the money's in there, I have to assume that it's from people who are actively in banking or remittance and who actually see a genuine use for this. Um, but don't take my word as law on this Yeah, one. I mean, XRP has been under the uh, I mean, a microscope and people have tossed so much shit at it and it's still standing and it's still working and companies are adopting it like crazy, which is nuts. Um, it, just, it is centralized somewhat. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's a very centralized thing. And I know they've got a schedule that's not really released, but they, they have a general idea, so they say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it definitely has potential, and it could, uh, yeah, it could disrupt banking, or at least um, uh, transfer of payments internationally, which is where its primary use case is for these large businesses that want to do transactions overseas and don't want to wait two weeks for, uh, for a simple payment process to go uh finance fox jesse uh yeah. you also uh you're in more you're leaning more towards uh lending being the primary disruptor um uh, would you say just banking as a whole or is it pretty much specific to to the lending and loans through cryptocurrency i think lending will be the first alternative to be the genuine use case to use Bro. any particular reasons behind it um, so far, there hasn't been any alternatives except for credit scoring. There's no way to get a loan uh, except for like uh, micro lending, but even that has very high interest rates. Mm -hmm. So I think that the decentralized loans is probably the best next best thing you can do. Now, I haven't used uh, I haven't used the loan and lending uh, platforms too much. Uh, how how do they ensure that you actually pay back that loan? Uh, you pay down a collateral in the beginning and it's locked down. So if you do not pay, the lender gets your collateral and the, uh, the loaner takes the pays interest each month or year or however much, uh, you set it. 
Okay. Uh, and that's about it. It's very simple, to be honest. So do you always have to put down, um, I guess what's preventing me if I put down a thousand dollars collateral, but I want to take $2,000 loan. Can I do that? Only if the, somebody agrees with that deal. Okay. And only to hear at least it's, uh, lenders and loaners taking deals or offering deals. And is it all backed by KYC AML just to make sure? Uh, some are, some aren't. Nexo okay. is very KYC and AML. I would imagine it would, I mean, it would have to be to some degree or there's no liability for someone to put down $1,000, take a $2,000 loan and just town. Uh, oh. No, for ETH Land, there is no <laughs> KYC. For ETH Land, you don't need to do KYC. Okay. Since you have the collateral and interest rates, that's basically all you have to do. Okay. And so people, I assume people have to choose whether or not they want to do business with you based on a rating of some sort? Um, not always. You do right. get a rating if you, how many loans you don't or do take and how you pay your interest rates. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that pretty much uh, sums it all up. So I am going to uh, sign you guys out of here, but... Uh, is there any final words that you guys want to say? Just thanks for having me on. This was great. I'd be happy to have on any other time. Awesome. Yeah, we've got a uh, we've got a few more planned and uh, trying to get some of the top fifty coins in here, which we should have next week. I'm hoping. Um. So yeah, definitely be a part of that. And yeah, thanks for thanks for coming out here. Thanks for having a brief little chat and blocking discussion. Uh, we might start growing these ones out a little bit more and having uh, like a full day session where you've got you know, about an okay. hour. Yeah, f thank you too for inviting me. It was, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was it was kind of interesting conversation. <laughs> uh, well, uh, as long as I have a last word, I, I want to make a special art if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. uh, in in uh, two weeks, uh, XDNA uh, development team will. Uh, represent a new project uh, it will not be like uh, xdna close and new project starts it will be uh, two projects separated from uh, each other and it will call it will call uh, notarius coin i will uh, i will send you a link after it will be available okay good and brandon anything uh cool happening with OX coming up yeah, I mean, so what we're still, a lot of what we want to do in terms of Lava Wallet uh, is a little bit dependent on the next phase of the Ethereum updates. We're waiting to see how things change in terms of block time. I know being a mineable token, we're extremely dependent on that kind of technology to be stable. Right. And so we're watching that like a hawk, keeping updated with the next phases of updates. Um, and one of our team members, he's working on a new project um, I'm not going to spoil anything. He can be the one to talk and you can have him on in a couple months. Uh, Sounds good. But, but having to do with some uh, virtual mining. Um, okay. Which I don't know all the details, but it sounds very cool. And good thing is in store. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right. I will uh, talk to you guys later and we'll see you on the, the next panel discussion. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Take all care. Right.